Hello children. Uh, so today as our maths lesson, we will learn about additive inverse and also how to subtract directed numbers without using a number line. Right? Last day you learned how to subtract directed numbers using a number line. Now, without using a number line. Right? So before going to this, you should know about this additive inverse. Okay, additive inverse. When you are given any number, you know that directed numbers have a sign. Eh? They have a direction. So that direction is shown by the sign plus or minus. So the additive inverse of that particular number has the opposite direction, the opposite sign. If the number is plus 3, the additive inverse is minus 3. Okay, it's a simple theory. If the number is minus 5, the additive inverse is plus 5. Okay, so here we will complete this table. The additive inverse of plus 3 is minus 3. The additive inverse of minus 5 is plus 5. Then we have some decimals and fractions also. Simply you change the sign in plus 2.5. So, the additive inverse of this is minus 2.5. Additive inverse of this is plus 0 0.4. Next, plus 2 over 5. So, the additive inverse of this plus 2 over 5 is minus 2 over 5. Don't go to change the numerator or denominator here. Okay? Same numerator, same denominator will come here. Only the sign will be changed. Minus 1 over 7. The additive inverse of that number is plus 1 over 7. Now we will see how this is used in this subtraction of directed numbers. Okay, so hope that you understood this. Let's see the subtraction of directed numbers. Now we have plus 2. From plus 2, you need to subtract plus 3. Yeah, actually, we cannot deal with this subtraction. You know how to add the directed numbers. So here we will try to change this subtraction into an addition. Right? So here, don't change the first directed number. It should be kept as it is. Plus 2 will be plus 2 on. Right? After that, what will happen? You need to change this subtraction into an addition. When you are changing it, you need to get the additive inverse of the next number. Right? So don't do any change for the first number. Here we know that subtraction becomes an addition. While it is happening so, you need to change this plus 3 also. Additive inverse of plus 3 is minus 3. Now, when you change this, this is familiar. You have seen this earlier. This is just addition of two directed numbers. So, you know that same uh, when there are two different signs, you need to subtract. You need to subtract. So, from 3, when you subtract 2, 1 is coming. Here, we can see more minuses are there. So, you get the sign of that. Minus 1 is the answer. Right? After changing this into the addition and get, getting the additive inverse, the same procedure like in addition, you need to follow here. Let's see the second one. Plus 3 will be plus 3 only. Make this subtraction as an addition and the additive inverse of minus 5 is plus 5. Now, we can see the same sign. Same sign. Keep and add. 5 plus 3 is 8. Same sign. Keep and add. Different signs. Subtract. Look, different signs. If there are different signs, subtract the numbers. Take the sign of the bigger number here, actually. Minus 3 is not bigger. But when you consider 2 and 3, just 2 and 3 without signs, 3 is bigger. So you take the sign of that particular number. 
Next. Minus 7. I'm writing this subtraction as an addition and writing the additive inverse of 3. It became minus 3 now. Now what? You need to add these two directed numbers. Same sign. Same sign. Keep and add. Same sign. Keep and add. It's easy, right? Fourth one. Let's see. Minus 5. Don't change minus 5. Now you can write this subtraction as an addition. And minus 4 can be written as plus 4. Additive inverse of the next number. Eh? Now let's see. Same signs or different signs? Different signs. Different signs. Subtract. From 5, subtract 4. 1 is coming. Take the sign of the bigger number. When you consider only 5 and 4, bigger one is 5. Take the sign of it. Because more minuses are there. Next, uh, there are two subtractions. So carefully you need to do this. First number will be as it is. Change this subtraction into addition and the additive inverse plus 3. Again, write this subtraction as an addition and get the additive inverse of minus 2. It's plus 2. Now, step by step or straight away, you can find the answer. Uh, if I make this sum like this, you can simplify the last two and then that answer with the first one or else first two and that answer with the last one. Uh, I'll do like this minus 8 plus here we know same sign, keep and add. Okay, now different signs subtract from 8 when you subtract 5, 3, k. Okay? Take the sign of the bigger number. When you take just 8 and 5, 8 is the biggest one. So, sign of it is minus. Now we have a fraction. Let's see. First one should be written as it is. Write the subtraction as an addition, then the additive inverse. Now, let's see whether the denominators are same. You need to add these two fractions. To add or subtract fractions, you need to check whether the denominators are same. So, don't forget fraction rules here, okay? Right, same denominator name, so you can keep it as it is. Now, look at the signs. Different signs. If they have different signs, subtract. From 3, subtract to 1. Take the sign of the bigger number. When you take just 2 and 3, bigger 1 is 3. Take the sign of it. Children, it doesn't mean that minus 3 is bigger. I told you, without considering the sign, you need to compare 2 and 3, okay? Next one. Uh, we have uh, like a mixed number and also like a whole number, ne? Okay, let's see anyhow. Firstly, we will make the changes in the beginning. Plus 3 and half. Addition minus 2. Okay, now let's see. You need to add these two. Anyhow, we know that two different signs. If there are two different signs, you need to really subtract from 3 and half. Let's take lobes of breads. There are three lobes of bread and half of a bread. Okay, half. And from this, you need to subtract 2. First one subtracted. Second one subtracted. How many lobes of breads are remaining? One and half. From three and half, I subtracted 2. So how many are remaining? One and half. What's the sign of it? Plus. More pluses are there, ne? More pluses are there. Plus one and half. Next example, two decimals, minus 5.3, addition, minus 2.5. Okay, same sign, same sign, keep and add. 
okay you need to consider about the decimal place okay you know that 5.3 2.5 let's add this 7.8 so the answer is 7.8 it's not compulsory of following this method in your mind also you can add and write the answer Let's see the next question. Minus 2.3 addition plus 1.1. Am I right? This became an addition. Minus 1.1. The additive inverse of it is plus 1.1. Now this have two different signs. If they have two different signs, we cannot add. We have to subtract. So you must place the bigger number up. That means without considering the sign, 2.3 is bigger. 1.1 is smaller. Let's subtract what will come. 1.2. What's the sign of it? We can see more minuses are there. So the sign of it is minus 1.2. Last example. Just from 8 you need to subtract this. Let's see. Plus 8. Addition. Minus 3.4. Two different signs have to subtract. When you take 8 and 3.4, 8 is bigger. But you should write 8 as 8.0. Otherwise, uh, it may be a bit hard for you to subtract a decimal. Let's see. You can write this 8 as 8.0. From it, subtract 3.4. Have to borrow. Eh? You have to borrow from here. 6. 4. So the answer is 4.6. And we can see more pluses are there. So the relevant sign is plus 4.6 is the answer. So children, hope that you can understand this part. So you need to copy. Uh, you need to write this uh, subtopic additive inverse. And after that, you need to copy this table, right? After that, uh, these examples, by going through the video clip, you can copy the examples here. And after that, I'll give you a small work to do. Hmm. In exercise 4.2, in exercise 4.2, you can do the first question and second question fully. In second question, there are two parts A and B. You have to copy the questions there, right? So I think that you will be able to complete exercise 4.2, first question and second question, okay?